just our normal bills for payment that we do that we bring to the board every month. Um, we're bringing you, we do more check ones during the month of June to get everything posted back to the year so we can see exactly where we stand so that we don't ever spend our budget. Any questions on either of these? Uh, these are the final bills. Any questions? Comments? Well, we pay the bills. Second. We have a motion and a second to... <coughs> Those in favor of this uh, motion signify the raise your right hand. Thank you. We move to the action agenda, the first item approval of the student code conduct. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if you remember, uh, we asked to hold off on this because we received a lot of changes um, through our VSBA policy service that we have, and, and all of these changes really came down the pike. And uh, we had to incorporate those into our student code of conduct uh, here. But I've asked Mrs. Scott to really go through those changes. She's giving you a 3,000 foot view. I know that we did provide you with the changes that were highlighted in your board uh, packet there. But I wanted her to just go over those to see if you had any questions. I would also ask that you consider approving today because we have to get them printed before school starts. So if you feel comfortable with that, I would ask for you to approve on the first reading. So, Mrs. Scott. Good morning, Dr. Bob, members of the board. I just want to briefly share with you um, the changes to the code of conduct and what you said you've already seen them. Um, the first slide, um, the expectation of dress um, has been expanded. It went from about a paragraph to almost a full page. Um, in addition, our secondary principals met and we have collaborated and we actually have uh, a uniform dress standard for all middle and high school students across the county. Um, but you, you will see those expectations and we'll ask them to review and, um, and see their student planner and handbook for the additional expectations of the school. Electronic cigarettes, we briefly spoke about this before. There's actually a separate section now. Not only is it included in the tobacco section, but it has its own identified section. And that includes um, school-sponsored activities, school buses, and premises. Um, electronic communication devices, uh, what's included in this is um, the statement that we are not liable if it's lost or stolen. And additional electronic communication device guidelines are there during our standardized testing. Tobacco-free school, um, they changed it. It used to just say tobacco products. It expanded the details of what tobacco is and its paraphernalia, and it's including clothes. Um, it also expanded the definition of smoking. Smoking does not necessarily mean you have it up to your lips. This is includes carrying, holding a lit tobacco substance. Weapons, more detailed description of what would be considered a weapon. What I like better about how it's set up, it's not in paragraph form, it's bulleted. So you can go down and it, it reads nicer and it stands out for them. Um, and the bullion, um, it went from probably a couple of paragraphs to about three pages. Uh, defines and prohibits the bullion, includes the characteristics of it, explains the difference between physical and emotional and the cyber bullying. New improved definitions, you can, and we'll go to the next one here. They have better defined these words, um, and they're listed there. It talks about alternative education, <coughs> destructive device, disruptive behavior, exclusion, expulsion, firearms, what long-term suspension does mean, defining one year when it comes to um, suspensions, pneumatic guns, short-term suspension, and what a superintendent's designated. There is a 
suggested verbiage change. Um, the VSBA has suggested changing the language of disciplinary consequences. That is actually at the end of every section. In the past, it said consequences, and they have asked to change that to corrective action. And then under directory information, we expanded the notice to parents to include the release of directory information of secondary students to recruiters and higher institutions unless the parents specifically request the information not to be released. Also in that statement, it tells them to, they'll need to let their building principal know. <coughs> Do you have any questions? That was a quick summary of what you received. recommendations or legislation. electronic devices, I mean, we need to emphasize that kids are not supposed to bring these to school. They bring all kinds of games and stuff that are over the top of my head. But what happens is they get stolen and then the administrators have to spend a lot of valuable time helping the kids try to recover them and that's not the administrator's responsibility. I mean, they have more important things to do than that. So we need to get that message out there somewhere. Yeah, you have to bring your own technology. I mean, that part in the, in the high schools, that'll be a little bit different, but um, they have to sign a waiver. So that's not a game. So that's correct, not gaming but devices. They are bringing their smartphones, but in that policy, we make it very clear when they can use it and under uh, what directions they, they can use it. And, and they, parents have, the parents have to sign, the students have to sign, but also we make it clear that we're not responsible for right. any items being lost or stolen. That's <laughs>
Yes, when um, any when a child um, comes in and says they're being bullied, the administrator will sit down with the child and they'll just determine whether or not it's actually bullying or it's something else. But if anything is handled, there's a conference with bullying, the legislation requires that it even is documented. If someone, it may, it may not be a suspension, it may just be a conversation between, we have to document it in our database for the discipline crime and violence that we've had a conference with the student about bullying. Okay, my concern is that discipline hearing hearing people report oh, I felt like I was being bullied I reported but then there's no record anywhere of it being reported so I, I feel like the person feels whether it's approved or not that they have to report it, that it should be documented that they did report it and then that can be used later on to justify whatever action may be taken whether, whether it's perceived whether it's actually proved out or not but it should be and that's a matter that, that we need to address with staff because I have heard stories from time to time where a student or parent reported to a teacher mm -hmm. or a counselor and it never gets to the administration so that's a matter of uh, making sure that all staff know which by the way we are required uh, to provide training to all staff on bullying and reporting requirements and I know the team has been working on on that train and that can certainly be a part of <coughs> which I, it probably is already a part of reporting in the process because the worst thing that can happen is that a teacher or a counselor holds on to that information right. and does not uh, report it to the administration well uh, the assistant principal that we talked to you had to conference or have it approved or have it documented they're supposed to every time they have a conference it's supposed to be documented situations that way. Um, we even have schools that that have a little box that the students put um, little park comes to mind where the students put a little note in there if they have a problem with bullying or those kinds of things. And our expectation is that the administration follows up with every one of those in a timely manner. So uh, it does get very time consuming but but we've learned a lot, haven't we, from some of those anonymous and I, I see uh, Section 125 plan is beneficial to employees who must pay for certain benefits with pre-tax dollars rather than after-tax dollars, and it is voluntary <coughs> participation for our employees. Our original plan was adopted in 1988 and involved our premium-only coverage. In 1999, they added the cafeteria provision, allowing employees to decline regular health care insurance and select other coverages such as cancer intensive care, dental and vision, and a portion of long-term disability. And in July 2004, the school board approved adding a flexible spending account. The Patient and Protection and Affordable Care Act, also called Obamacare, as amended, rewrote the rules on health insurance and made several changes. A listed in our board packet was several of them changes. 
One of the main changes was reporting the cost of employer-sponsored health care coverage on Form W-2. No more 90-day coverage waiting period or lifetime limit benefits. Employers must educate employees about the insurance exchanges. And White House postponed until 2015 the employer mandate to provide coverage. A summary of the plan description for the school system was included in the board packet from our top provider. And as an employer that sponsors the Section 125 plan, we're required to update our plan documents with all of these changes. It's recommended that the school board approve the amended IRS Section 125 plan per the attached resolution. Resolution 14, R14-13, the undersigned secretary or principal of Henry County Public Schools, the employer hereby certifies that the following resolutions were duly adopted by the board of directors of the employer on June 23, 2014, and that such resolutions have not been modified or rescinded as of the date hereof. Resolved that the form of the amended section 125 cafeteria plan effective July 1, 2014, presented to this meeting is hereby approved and adopted and that the proper officers of the employer are hereby authorized and directed to execute and deliver to the administrator of the plan one or more counterparts of the plan. Resolved that the administrator shall be instructed to take such actions that are deemed necessary and proper in order to implement the amended plan and to set up adequate accounting and administrative procedures to provide benefits under the plan. Resolved that the proper officers of the employer shall act as soon as possible to notify the employees of the employer of the adoption of the amended plan by delivering to each employee a copy of the summary description of the plan in the form of the summary plan description presented to this meeting, which form is hereby approved. The undersigned further certifies two copies of the adoption agreement, plan document, and the summary plan description approved and adopted in the foregoing resolutions are attached here. work with a great Ceridian or I think they're called wage marks now that advises us on this information and make sure that we keep up to date on our policies. Is it counting on this also? Um, I don't believe so. Yes, section 125. They are on our section 125. Other questions, comments? If not, then is there a motion regarding the resolution? <coughs> Good morning, Dr. DeVault, members of the board. This morning I'm seeking approval of the purchase of a Lego simple machines for all of our fifth grade classrooms. Legos are a gateway to helping our students pursue uh, STEM careers and also make those choices to enroll in our STEM courses. Um, as these students design, build, and then work their simple machines, they will be applying key math skills such as um, computation, measurement, and uh, predicting outcomes. Uh, also, with the simple machines, our students um, would be able to transition into more rigorous robotics in the middle and high school. So it is recommended that the board approve the purchase of the Lego simple machines for our fifth grade classes. The cost would be $9,984 out of the current budget uh, pending available funding and then $36,003.64 out of the Title VI um, grant, which would be 100% uh, reimbur reimbursable for a total of $57,987.64. Do you have any questions? It would be new. We're just 
trying to build our robotics program. We all know that we've seen uh, the demonstration of what happens in the high school with the VEX robotics and also moving towards Legos in those pre-engineering classes. And also in the middle school, I know Mr. Grandinetti and uh, Mr. Reeves have both uh, demonstrated at different events like the STEM fair and also here at the board what we're trying to move <coughs> towards. And we want to start uh, competing in competitions as you know our governor school students do in the first robotics league. But we know in order to get there, we need our students to start at a younger age and build on those skills. And um, we already have Build to Express um, with, with Legos, but we want to take it up another level and purchase the simple machines. Yes, sir. And we, we, you know, the plan is still to move forward with the purchase with uh, the Title VI grants. We just may have to do it in different steps. Do we have a motion? I make a motion that we approve the purchase of Lego simple machine equipment for fifth grade classroom. <coughs> Second. Any additional discussion? If not, those in favor of this motion say by the way, you right here. Uh, the board traditionally has used year-end funds to support the division's band program and the help with purchasing instruments. Uh, the purchase of, purchase of these instruments will be an asset to each band in growing the band program and helping defer the price of high-priced uh, instruments to our, our, our parents. Uh, it is recommended. Oh, the, the bid was re received for the band instruments and full responses were received and the National Educational Music Company was the overall low bidder. So it's recommended that the board approve the purchase of the band instruments for Bassett High School, Magna Vista High School, Field Oak Council Middle School, and Lowell Park Middle School. Uh, the cost would be $30,000, $10,000 for each high school, and $5,000 for each middle school. Uh, and this is also pending available funding from 2013-14 instructional <coughs> budget. Mr. Chairman, on the band today, I did meet with the instruments in hand. I don't know that we'll be able to support this. As you'll notice with all of these uh, it says pending available funding um, but I do want to make a commitment that if we have additional funds available I want to help them again to support the band program not just at you know, one side of town. I want to make sure we're, we're doing that across the board and each of the band directors provided us with a list of their needs and uh, we'll, we'll do what we can with what we have, but uh, I don't know how much I'll be able to do this year, but uh, it's just a, an example of something that I want to keep in the back of our mind moving forward to help support Lake Place. Questions regarding this request? Any additional questions, concerns? In, in an effort to maximize and, and make our services more efficient, a uh, request for proposal was sent out for uh, multi-year term contracts for uh, copier and Duplo maintenance services. And um, uh, of the three firms that responded, uh, only one uh, really responded with the request for services on the copier and then one group with our Duplo machines. Um, and given the amount of the money that's involved for, for approval, uh, Toshiba Business Solutions from North Carolina provided the services that would meet our needs uh, at this point for servicing our copier machines as Bassett Office Supply would be the ones to service our Duplo machines in our schools. 
as we're thinking that based on the cost per copy set up on it, that we're looking at roughly $70,000 annually uh, for servicing these machines and taking care of our copiers in our schools. And uh, it's recommended that uh, to she the, the contract be awarded to Toshiba Business Solutions for providing these services on our copiers. That $70,000 That's just dealing with our copiers. <coughs> The vast of all the supply and do float machines were, were much less than that. I can't remember. Around 4,000 annually for the do float machines, roughly. That seems like an awful, extremely awful amount of money for a year to service a copy of this. How many copiers are we talking about? I can't count them up. It's a bunch. Yeah, it's a lot of copiers out there. I, I've got a list we can share with you if you like. Yeah, exactly. The services yeah. involved in that a lot. And, and of course, too, they're basing these on a cost per copy based on the history of what we've used. So, um, you know, when they look at this dollar figure, we're, we're hoping as we move forward, obviously, that we would be reducing our paper usage on it. So that would also reduce our services. This is just a approximate amount based on what our history is on it. And again, this, this contract renewable up to five years. And then, um, you know, of course, we have a clause that we can cancel it with a 30 day list. Sir? Uh, no, sir. No, well, it has the potential for escalation on it, but uh, again, that has to be negotiated every on an annual basis. We have to agree with it as well as, as the uh, uh, contract. That Bassett Office Supply was the only one that submitted for the um, Duplo machines, but not uh, the copiers. So this is a good idea because before we had different companies servicing different schools and Nothing give teachers headaches anymore when the copy machine's down for a week at a time. And this is a good thing. We're we're putting them all together, the whole county wide. So uh, this is an excellent idea. We're opinion. trying. Now we still have a few stragglers out there that, if you will, that uh, are, that will be under because of the warranty piece of it. But as they come out of warranty, they'll be put on this contract as well. Now we are working on standardizing our, our copy machines throughout the county. You know. They would get into, and we end up with um, uh, an array of uh, <laughs> situations out there. And I know that you all have been meeting about uh, a recommendation on that. Are there any updates on that? Well, the plan is if this is approved, then the plan will be um, a, a memo going out upon your approval. That would be um, all any purchases, our copiers, and stuff would flow through facility maintenance and work with uh, Ms. Lawson, Mr. Bullens prior to these purchases. Standardizing, we think will make it more efficient for us, uh, and we'll, we'll provide more on that. But it's a work in progress. And, and the county, of, the county is part of this as well. So if, they, if this is uh, accepted by you all, the um, county could also use this contract for their copiers. Of course, they don't have near as many as we do, but they are part of this. And they looked at those as well. Well, this takes some responsibility off the principal and gives them some more time to do it. More important, Mr. Chairman, I move we approve. trying to streamline that so that we would uh, make sure that we standardize across the division of what we do. That's fine. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Move to item I, uh, authorization to send tours in the absence of the superintendent or FY 2015. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to propose that Sandy Strayer serve in, in my absence. Um, I had uh, Sandy and, and Bill on wrestle for this. <laughs> um, actually, um, either one of them would do a fine job in my absence, but um, what we learned is there's several title grants that, that are tied to this, and certainly that falls under 
construction, so uh, uh, I'd like to change trades for the past eight or six or so. So moved. Second. <coughs> moved and seconded that Mrs. Schrager will be authorized to sign a cotton napkin as a vote of favor. This is a motion to move on to trade number four. Share with you information about the budget, Mrs. Lawson. What we discussed the other day. We we are anticipating. I don't know if you've been following any of the work of General Assembly, but we we did get some early figures, and it looks like we're going to have an additional shortfall that we're going to have to address. The amount that we're looking at. Roughly $178,000. It's a shortfall that we're seeing the figures that we received from the Virginia Department of Education, so that's an additional $178,000 uh, that we're going to have to, to fund in our existing budget. Of course, um, as I've shared with you, uh, the governor has many different options uh, to you know, veto or add amendments. Um, or make make additional changes. But what I read recently was that the uh, the governor has said he will pass the budget, uh, but uh, that there were some stipulations, most of it related to Medicaid and some of those other areas. So I don't know where we are as of this morning, but I just wanted to prepare you that um, what we're seeing is. the actual shortfall because that's what we're seeing right now. I just wanted to make you aware that um, that's what we saw in our updated numbers. Uh, we don't like to see that. As you remember, when we were passing our budget, we were basing that on what we had at the time. But um, if this goes through as it is, we'll have to find some additional. Yeah. 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 shortfall for us. So we, we hope that we were very conservative with our enrollment numbers and we went with a lower estimate of all the estimates we received. So we're hopeful we won't have a decline because if we do, that would be an additional shortfall. You all know that we had a declining enrollment this year and we had to cut our budget a good amount. I was a little surprised that we got it as quickly as we did, but but generally what I understand is they work up all the different scenarios when the budget's being developed, and they have that developed and they share it with all of us. I'm cautious that you know that's not the final, but um, you better believe we went in there and looked <laughs> to see what it could look like, and that's what we're initially looking at, an additional approximately $178,000. But I, I will keep you posted, and here we are, June 23rd. <coughs> you know, uh, what are we a week away from the July 1st? So uh, deadline. So, so hopefully, something will happen in the next couple of days. Okay. Uh, no other uh, questions regarding uh, that update. We move to matters from the board, or matters from the board to come before uh, the group today.
Thank you. 